A few weekends ago, I decided to try my hand at a challenge run of one of my favorite games of last year, Armored Core 6. So this challenge may be a little bit different to what you're used to with maybe a fists only challenge run or a specific weapon type only challenge run. This challenge run instead is something I'm calling the randomizer elimination challenge that was showed to me by my friend TK. The way it works is Armored Core 6 has a series of preset Armored Cores that you can pick from that generally represent Armored Cores that you run into during the campaign. So what we do is we spin the wheel, we get a random Armored Core from that preset, and whenever we die in that Armored Core, it's eliminated from the pool and we spin the wheel again. And we have until the wheel runs out to beat the game. And to make it a little more difficult, we are going for the third ending, often dubbed the true ending, the one that plays the cool anime song at the credits. So this should be a lot of fun and a lot more difficult than I had anticipated. To make things even more difficult, this is one of my Rosewald's patented drunk streams that we do uh, every once in a while, maybe a month or so. So that just adds a little bit to the challenge because if doing it sober wasn't hard enough, I'm sure it'll be great as we start to get into the end game and I'm quite intoxicated. Now the beginning of this challenge run is pretty straightforward. The first few missions or so are the same no matter what storyline you're going for, and they're mostly just beginner missions to get people acclimated, so we'll skip ahead past those. But I do want to mention the first Armored Core we rolled was one of my personal favorites, Steel Haze Ortis, which is of course piloted by the delectable Rusty. I love him with all my heart. So this first bottleneck mission is the first kind of different mission that you get as you're approaching the third storyline, and it's to instead protect the Strider instead of destroying it like you do in the normal storylines. However, as soon as you load in, it blows up and you run into your very first kind of new enemies, which are the Rubicon Research Institute MTs that survived the fires of Ibis. These are significantly more difficult than your standard MTs, and about halfway through the mission, after you destroy the first two, you'll get attacked by the Bone Wheels. This mission requires a little bit more than any of the previous missions do in terms of your player skill and the ability of your armored core. So against the MTs, they move a lot faster than any of the typical normal enemies. So you're gonna be able to wanna do really well placed shots and they can absolutely hit hard. So if you run out of boost at an inopportune time and they get you with that nice little assault boost kick, you're gonna be in big trouble. The second enemy type in this mission is the Bone Wheels, which will just charge right at you. If your Armored Core doesn't have a high hitting weapon that can stagger them as they approach you, it's going to be a lot more troublesome to be able to evade them while the MTs are hammering you. So ideally you want a really good Armored Core with something big like a rocket or a stun needle or something like that that can stagger the Bone Wheels as they approach and ideally you're able to kill the Bone Wheels fast enough before you get overrun by them and the MTs, because if they all start to attack you, you get into a lot of trouble. On this mission, we unfortunately lose Steel Haze Ortis, which is an exceptional armored core to have at pretty much any point in the game. Melee weapons or armored cores with melee weapons are at a premium here as they're exceptionally good against any armored core versus armored core fights, and I wish I hadn't misplayed this so hard. However, we then roll the hero of this run, the Mind Alpha. The Mind Alpha is an absolute rock star of an armored core, equipped with a little plasma buddy on the shoulder, uh, one of those delayed missile explosion things on the other shoulder, a melee weapon, and a handheld bazooka. This has pretty much everything you could hope for. The plasma buddy has great tracking and is able to bring down shields well. The nice delayed explosion missiles can be really good for attracting evasive opponents and obviously the handheld rocket launcher for stagger damage and the melee weapon for huge damage on staggered opponents is just everything you could ever want in an armored core. Watch how well this thing manages to sweep up this honestly quite difficult mission right at the beginning of this challenge run. Coming in hot. He's a dangerous 16. Knock them down and go in for the kill. Alright, we're going for the other wheelie boys first. Okay, winnable. Okay. Wait, maybe the plasma thrower is better than I anticipated. We 
Wait, the plasma thrower thing is great. Holy shit, I can't believe we actually did that with only losing one mech. That's incredible. Another roadblock mission that destroyed a lot of my armored cores in previous runs is the mission where you team up with the red guns, Iguazu, and Volta. However, on the third storyline playthrough, you instead get an option to kill Iguazu and Volta, and that is where things get really hairy. If these two manage to team up on you, it can be a real, real problem. But once again, we see just how good Mind Alpha is in Armored Core vs. Armored Core situations as well, as luckily Volta is pretty nice and doesn't chase us as we just obliterate Iguazu thanks to our way better than I expected Plasma Whip, and then we can just take down Iguazu since our handheld bazooka reloads so goddamn fast. In fact, the only bad thing I can say about the Mind Alpha Armored Core is it doesn't have any expansion slots, which is a huge bummer because those can really help change a fight, whether it's the one that keeps you alive at one health, or most importantly, the Assault Armor is my absolute favorite as it'll pretty much instantly stagger anything within melee range, letting you get in some huge damage. But we don't have that on this Armored Core, but that's okay, it still kicks ass. Volta's being very nice. I cannot believe Volta hasn't attacked us yet. That was great. This might be the run. But did he just get stuck there? Damn, that was a cool. Wow, we first tried Iguazu Volta. Wait, this might be the run chat room. Holy shit. I'm gaming. Up next is The Wall. The Wall. Nothing on Earth can make it fall. No, just kidding. This mission's incredibly easy, and even though Mind Alpha doesn't have the best loadout in the world for this, the handheld rocket is pretty much all you'll need to make sure you can rack up stagger damage. It's obviously a bit annoying once Rusty leaves and you're left to deal with it on your own, trying to fly up and behind it to get good damage on it, but overall it's not too difficult and you have more than enough ammo to work with. The next kind of difficult mission is the prisoner rescue mission, however if you do this mission enough times you know where all of the enemies will spawn and you can actually go out ahead of the helicopter and defeat them before they actually get a chance to shoot at the helicopter at all. The only kind of difficult part can be the ends if you don't have a good armored core versus armored core battling suit. However, Mind Alpha once again carried us through this no problem, it is an absolute powerhouse. Don't worry though, things aren't all easy with the Mind Alpha, as the next mission comes from All Mind and requires us to work with Kate Markson to help interrupt one of the inspections from the PCA. The reason this mission can be difficult is because some of the PCA enemies can take quite a lot of ammo and they can be quite evasive if you aren't well placing your shots, and then you have to fight two HCs and a giant cataphract right at the end, and that can also be incredibly difficult. As you can see, we got awful fucking close to losing this mission. Now we're gonna play this a little slow and steady. We're 
risking it all. Oh fuck. Little man, come out, help me. Oh, we're dead. Oh my god, that was way too close. He's like one HP. Oh my god, that was so fucking terrifying. Oh my god. The next tough mission is the one where you have to fight Balteus and Sola, an absolute banger of a mission, especially in the first few days after release. However, nowadays Balteus is a super pushover and the Sola fight is not too difficult either, as long as you make sure to kill the invisible snipers first. If you're fast enough, Sola won't even be able to catch up with you to actually attack you at the same time, so you should be able to just take these pretty simply. Next, we're gonna skip ahead a bit through all of the Cinder Carla stuff. There's really not too much to mention here until you get to the Sea Spider. On your way to the third ending, you do get a bonus mission where you have to destroy some towers and then you fight Iguazu and some cops, but that honestly isn't too difficult. Once again, Mind Alpha is super great at Armored Core versus Armored Core combat, so we don't have anything too much to worry about. Sea Spider itself is also not a problem if you've played this game through a few times. Make sure to dodge the giant cleave attacks that jump down on you, and then when it goes up into its little helicopter mode, you can actually stand on top of it if you're super, super good at angling yourself just right. But otherwise, this is not a too difficult fight at all. Next up, we're gonna skip ahead quite a bit more. None of the upcoming missions are too difficult. You just kill some PCA stuff, watch the PCA fleet come in, yada yada yada. It isn't until we get to the mission where we have to find the floating city, and in the third ending, you get attacked by Thumb Dolmayan. This can be quite a fucking difficult fight. I lost a few armored cores here on previous runs, but once again, Mind Alpha just absolutely dominant in the entire early game of this challenge. But don't worry, that'll all come to an end soon. Damn! Wait, we're kicking ass with this fucking armored core! Ah! I feel bad, we're doing too good. Destroyed. good. Next up, we see the worm. Wow, cool. And then we move on to another All Mind mission where we have to destroy coral transports. The beginning of this mission is not that difficult. It's pretty easy to make sure you get all the coral transports. The problem is at the end when you have to go up and down between the different levels to make sure you can reach all of the different coral transports. If your armored core has bad thrusters or bad range, this will be a problem. The biggest issue is right at the end where it spawns four coral transports on the lower half and five on the top half. This can be really, really difficult, but if you haven't let any through up till this point, you only have to kill five of these and Kate Markson will take care of four. If you let five through, you'll lose the mission, but you can let four through and that's pretty much what I did here. Everyone say thank you, Kate Markson. Now, now the real trouble begins. We have the mission where we have to take on the old Raven squad with Chartreuse, King, and of course, Raven. This is incredibly difficult. King and Chartreuse can double team you and it's incredibly difficult to be able to evade all of their attacks if you don't burst one down immediately to make it two 1v1s. To top things off, Raven spawning is on on timer, so if you're playing it really safely, you're gonna have to deal with three armored cores coming at you. Even if you have a good Armored Core versus Armored Core suit like the Mind Alpha, Chartreuse is an absolute tank and just takes so many hits to actually go down. So we finally lose Mind Alpha. However, Mind Alpha isn't the only thing we lose here. We also lose Rubiconian, an Armored Core that's pretty okay but uses a swappable primary weapon shoulder, which is not my favorite thing in the world, so losing this isn't terrible. We also lose Trainer, which is a super basic Armored Core that is surprisingly effective sometimes. Overall, not a huge loss here either. We also managed to roll Candle Ring, which in my previous runs was the hero of those runs. Candle Ring is a really, really mobile armored core with some great primary missile launchers and the double pounders or double songbirds on the shoulders that can just do immense damage as long as you can rack up the stagger. However, it's not quite enough for us in this mission and we just barely managed to lose. Oh 
Oh, we're dead, we're dead. Fuck! We were so close. Why does she have so many repair kits? Fuck, we lost Ring Freddy. We also unfortunately lose the mirror match with King's Astro Crown, and we also lose Burn Pickaxe, which is a surprisingly decent armored core, but it's just missing another shoulder weapon in an expansion slot, which makes it bad. The last thing we lose on this mission is the Institute Armored Core, which is pretty underwhelming. It's not terrible and it's pretty good, but it just wasn't enough to get us through this mission before we finally roll on something special. Raven's Own Armored Core, The Nightfall. And this is when I finally learned to become a follower of the Church of Pile Bunker. 30%. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is the fucking coolest AC of all time. I just gotta play the end of this, right? <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh my god, we could! Holy fucking hell! That was insane! Ow. Nightfall manages to carry us through Honest Brute as well, because it is just such an incredibly strong suit. Before we run into... As many of you may have been thinking, the real difficult part of this challenge. The difficulty here is the giant ice worm. If you've played the game casually, you know you're supposed to equip the stun needle here, which takes out the ice worm shields in one shot each for the first and second phase, and two shots for the third phase. Unfortunately, however, there is only one armored core in the entire preset selection that has one, and it is Snail's Armored Core himself, which means we either have to lucky roll to get the Stun Needle, or we do it the hard way. Because it's not impossible to beat the Ice Worm without the Stun Needle. It's just a lot more difficult. Playing this mission without the Stun Needle is an entirely different beast. You need to learn every single moveset attack that it has, not only so you know how to dodge them, but also so you know how to actually get damage in, because you are super, super limited on ammo here, and those shields are hefty when you are not using the Stun Needle. Energy weapons are huge here, as well as like the charged electricity weapons do really, really good damage to the shield. Nothing like the Stun Needle, but it definitely helps if you roll an Armored Core with that. Otherwise, get ready for a battle of attrition. With Nightfall, we managed to get all the way to third phase, thanks to the Songbirds being pretty effective at dealing like direct linear damage to the Ice Worm when you've got a good opening, and getting a really, really lucky Pile Bunker hit in on the shield as well, but it just wasn't enough and we run out of ammo by the end of it. We somehow managed to get close quite a few times, but that giant double shield on the third phase is just so, so difficult to break through. And we lose Hermit, Milktooth, Tester, Bitter Promise. Unfortunately, we also lose one of the best armored cores, HAL 826, and Echo, Locksmith and Ligertail, and the Clutch King himself, Mad Stomp. We lost a lot of really, really good armored cores here. Losing the coral suits with HAL 826 as well as Echo is huge. Losing Michigan's armored core sucks. Losing Liger Tail sucks, but we still have some decent ones going on. And the one we actually used to beat the Ice Worm is not what I expected. I had to use weapons I thought were a complete joke, the bubble launchers. Good to go. Don't die before I get a chance to fire, buddy. Tourist, got a message from the chief for you. Wow, that's so much damage. What? Another. You heard him. Don't want to make for an easy target. All right, what are we doing for damage? I won't miss. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh my god, that damage is nuts! Oh, 
All right, we got a lot of ammo. We can play this pretty safe. Um, we got a lot of ammo, we got a lot of repair kits, and we do a lot of damage. We're gonna use all of our shoulder first for safety. Oh, that was good damage. Oh, we need like one more hit. We need like one more hit. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god. Are we the worm killers? Rusty, come on, help, buddy! All emergency valves closed. Disabling limiter. One hundred. One ten. One fifteen. All or nothing. Oh, it's so cool. We did it! Is it over? Get clear, it's gonna blow! Oh my god, we're the worm killers! It's that easy! You shit me. The freelance are really Materlink is Pog Champ! Somehow, Materlink's dinky little armored core with those stupid little bubble launchers was exactly what we needed to defeat the ice worm. However, we do lose Materlink's armored core to the next huge wall fucking cold call now i need to talk about cold call here because i hate him i hate him with all my heart he's the stupid assassin that iguazu hires to kill you and you have to fight him in this stupid room with a stupid ramp in it and it's so hard to gain any altitude and it's so confusing and you can lose him so easy and i don't use hard lock because I'm so used to using not hard lock from other armored cord games, and so I just lose track of him so easy, and we lost so many fucking armored cord here, and I'm so mad about it. We lose so, so many armored cores here. I'm not even gonna list them all out. We lose so many. But the end result is we have less than 15 left for the entire rest of the game. However, the one that finally gets us to the finish line through Cold Call, who is a nobody. He's a trash can. I don't know why I struggled with him so much. But the armored core that finally gets us there is Swinburne's, using, once again, a weapon I have never tried before, which is that electric stun baton. Turns out, it's actually pretty decent. Turns out, once again, all you need in a good armored core for this game is a nice direct damage weapon with Swinburne's right shoulder weapon, some decent missiles for some good just kind of passive damage you can throw out whenever, and a nice melee weapon. That's pretty much all you need, and Swinburne's great for it. Light shoulder ammunition at 50% AP at 50%. AP at 30%. Oh my god, the fadeaway jump for 96 Jordan! Holy fuck, that was nutty. That's what we're that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, I didn't blink that entire time. Oh my god, I didn't blink that entire time. Somehow this armored core gets us really far, all the way through the underground depths, easily dispatching O'Keefe, which can be a real difficult fight if you don't have a good armored core for it, and even manages to clutch up in the rusty fight. I was pleasantly surprised. Oh my god, that was the- oh my god, that was the closest fight of all time, I'm about to- oh my god. 
Oh my god, calm down, calm down. <laughs> oh my god, I had like 200 HP. Holy shit. So from here on out, we are in the end game and things aren't looking super great for us. We have less than 15 armored cores left. We've lost a lot of heavy hitters like HAL-826, Echo, Steel Haze Ortis. However, we are finally approaching the end. If we can just manage to get a couple good armored cores left to carry us through, then we'll be fine. However, the issue is with the next mission. Traditionally, in the other two storylines, you fight Ibis here. However, in the third storyline, you have a much, much more difficult fight where you fight Snail and Iguazu at the same time. It's really, really, really difficult and the arena is really, really, really small and you have nowhere to run to. We once again lose a lot of armored cores here. We drop Swinburne, we drop Corporation, we also lose Headbringer and Circus and Steel Haze and our rival Dead Sled and UU, which kind of doesn't count anyway because it's arguably the worst armored core in the entire preset. Until we finally roll ASCII, a really, really good armored core for this situation. gosh, I overextended because I thought I was going to kill. And somehow, I throw it all away. We were in such a good spot, and I just dropped the ball. However, we finally managed to roll on another really, really good armored core. And just like with the Raven fight, it's a mirror match that finally gets us the W, as I roll Open Faith, which is Snail's armored core. Nobody's done. Oh my god! Jaden Space Hall, oh, hello like Dswell, thank you so much for the follow! Holy. I have 74 fucking HP, I'm about to pee my pants! We did, we did it. it. Time to drink from the chug jug. We are really down to the wire here. Including the armored core I'm using now, Open Faith, we are down to 10 armored cores. And we have 4 missions left. Luckily, Everyone except for the last one is incredibly easy. So we are gonna skip ahead to the final, final mission where we fight Iguazu Mind and his two best squid friends. Unfortunately, they're just too much for open faith and we lose one of our best armored cores, one of the few armored cores that still has a melee weapon equipped and we're forced to once again spin the wheel with this roll, we land on Chartreuse's mech, the incredibly tanky one from the Raven Squad fight that I complain about constantly. This armored core is weird. It's got some weapons I'm not used to. It's got a shoulder plasma shotgun thing, and it's got big rockets otherwise. It's also got tank treads, which I don't use often, let alone these weird alien space age ones that I think I only used as a joke when I played 4-Answer. But with this, 
it's actually the one that brings us the W. So I'm gonna let the whole fight play out and watch to the end, because we get incredibly lucky as my incredibly drunk intuition gives me the clutchest dodge in all of Armored Core history. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoy content like this, I do all kinds of variety stream stuff on my stream, and also I'm trying to upload weekly to YouTube in 2024. We'll see how long I manage to keep that up for, but once again, thank you all for watching. Okay, not terrible. Oh my god. Oh, holy shit. How did we win? The we got a YouTuber, baby! Oh my god, I'm finally not a cringe streamer. Now I'm a base streamer. All we needed was the chug jug.